Sound matters. Be heard. Welcome to the podcast where you get exclusive behind the scenes tips to make your own show sound truly spectacular. This is Podtastic Audio. Hey, what's happening? How are you doing today? How is your podcast coming along? I want to say thank you so much for being here today here at Podtastic Audio, where I have designed this show as kind of a behind the scenes to the Chris and Christine show, which I started that podcast back in 2019 with Christine out of like a whim. Let's just start a podcast. Let's do it for fun. Why not? Let's jump on in. And then people are asking me, like, how would you even do that? Well, what am I, some kind of magician? I don't know, man. So here is Podtastic Audio, kind of like behind the scenes on how we created that show and how maybe you can make your show sound amazing in the future. I know that podcast audio isn't something that everybody just figures out on day one. It takes a little time, a little practice, kind of figuring out the knobs, figuring out the settings working on what works best for you and your schedule and your co-hosts and your guests. My gosh, there's so many elements when it goes to creating a podcast and there's so many different ways you can podcast. And I know that uh, podcasting really isn't for everybody, but if you want to try podcasting, it's not that difficult to create an episode. In fact, I'm making one right now. You're listening to it. Ta-da! Now, how do I do that? Well, get the microphone out and you start talking. (laughs) That's kind of how you do it. Some people like to have show notes. Some people like to have an outline. Some people like to read an entire script into the microphone. In some shows, they have to have a co-host or maybe they do interviews. You know, however you podcast, you do you and you keep on doing what you're doing. But if you want something better than what you already have, then listen up. Here we go. So when it comes to podcasting in general, I would say that most people that start a podcast, well, most new shows, I would say, new independent shows, let's break it down even further. So most new independent shows, they always, without a doubt, never, ever do solo shows. I know you're probably saying, Chris, it's just me and it's just my own show. But uh, let me ask you this. Do you interview people? Well, of course I do. I interview people all the time. My show is an interview show. Then you're not doing a solo show. When I mean a solo show, I mean just you and nobody else. I know it's hard to do a solo show, like totally 100% all by yourself. In fact, I'm doing one right now. How do I do this? Like, how is it even possible that I can talk into the void and uh, not have any interaction with anybody directly in front of me. And I know like when I started the Chris and Christine show, I wanted to do a podcast back then. I said, well, I don't think I could do one by myself. I got to have somebody with me. I got to have a co-host. Or uh, we weren't even thinking about interviews. Like interviews were so like further down the pipe. At first, it was like, if we have two people in the same room, bouncing off each other, Uh, Feeding off each other's energy would make for a fantastic and entertaining podcast show. And that's kind of how it got started because my entire audio, I guess, history really, really was with radio and morning radio shows. In fact, I listened to more morning radio than podcasting. I didn't really listen to podcasting much until I really got into podcasting. So for me, My whole experience with audio podcasting, I just assumed it was just like another radio show. Like I just assumed that when we come on here, we got to be funny and entertaining and upbeat like a morning radio show. I just assumed all that. You don't have to. I mean, you can be a very monotone. You can just be one tone the entire time on your show or, or you can be very, very casual, very relaxed and talk to your guest or even your co-host, and it can be just like a fly in the wall, you guys talking about whatever you're talking about in your room. You can do that. It's, you know, you can podcast however you want. I'm just saying for me, I've always tried to make an, a very entertaining show, exciting, energizing, 
excitement, great content delivered in an exciting way. That makes a fantastic podcast. But going back to becoming a solo podcaster, yeah, it's tricky. It's not easy to do. Trust me, I've been doing these. I'm on episode 990, whatever I'm on right now. And it's never been easy. In fact, I've had guests come on this show. The last episode was with a guest. And I love having guest interviews. But just because you have a podcast does not mean you have to have a guest on your show. In fact, it doesn't mean you even have to have anybody on your show. It could just be all you. Whoa, can I just blow your mind? It can be an entirely solo, just you on the microphone show. If you're an expert in something, please share it with the entire class of the world via podcast. If you have a business and you are a business owner or entrepreneur and you want to share your expertise with everybody, you totally can do that with a solo podcast. It's hard to do that when you have guests coming on every episode. You're like, why is that, Chris? Well, let me tell you an example here. Let's just say that you are one of those shows that have a guest interview every single week, right? And you interview whoever and whatever. It doesn't matter. The point is this, is that when you start your show, you say, hey, it's a so-and-so show. We talk to so-and-so, such great people. Our guest today is so-and-so, and here they are. And welcome to the show, so-and-so. So, so-and-so, why did you get into doing blank? And the guest goes into their thing and they start talking about their life and their stuff. And you find out all you want to know about the guest. Oh, the guest is great. And then you don't really share anything about you because it's all about your guest, right? So the guest looks like they're amazing. So you put their links to their information for your guest in your show notes. Of course, your guest is a great interview. And then people who listen to your show, they go over and check out all your guest information. Like, oh, your guest is this and does this and does that. Great. What about you? What do you do? I mean, I know you're hosting the guest. That's great. Anybody can do that. In fact, actually, now I think about it, you don't even have to be there. Just your guest has to be there. And make it your guest show, the guest spotlight. You know, sure, whatever. You're just a person that actually has the platform. You're just a person with the podcast where the guest can come on as a guest and talk about their stuff. What about you? What do you have to offer? What makes you so special? Why should we listen to you? In fact, the only common thread on your podcast, guess what? Yeah, it's you. So speaking of guest interviews for podcasts, I started thinking about maybe for the Chris and Christine show to flipping it on its head. And I'm talking about maybe toying with the idea of potentially not having guest interviews anymore on the show. What? What are you talking about, Chris? Uh, Well, I got me thinking like, you know what? They're very hard to schedule guest interviews. In fact, we enjoy guest interviews. We've done a lot of guest interviews on the show. I don't know how many we've done so far, maybe a hundred. I don't know. I haven't lost count. And we make them sound spectacular, all thanks to Clean Feed. Now, I'm not a sponsor of Clean Feed. I probably should be. Shout out, guys. Mark and Mark, what's up? And um, I like using it because it delivers crystal clear audio from anywhere in the world, live, real time, get the files immediately. Nothing gets downloaded from a cloud server later, nothing like that. No double ender crap. In fact, as soon as you record, you have the files. It's great. They sound amazing. Anyways, I've done clean feed for many interviews. In fact, they're all done that way. And we've kind of mastered the art of doing interviews for the show. In fact, we don't do like solo interview only shows. In fact, like the first 20, 25 minutes is us talking about the things that we want to talk about. Then we'll insert the guest. Now, I know a lot of shows and a lot of podcasters frown on that. They say they want to get to the guest as soon as possible. Maybe two minutes at the front end. Give me the guest. I want to go straight to the guest. I don't like that at all. Because it doesn't highlight what you are about. It doesn't get the listener excited to hear you. Because like I said, you are the common thread throughout your entire podcast journey. You, not the guest. The guest isn't there every week. You are. So that's why we like to do that. In fact, just recently, a listener told me personally, they said, you know what? Sometimes your guests are kind of boring. They're boring to listen to. I just fast forward through that part and just listen to you guys because I like to listen to you guys over the guest most of the time. 
So it got me thinking. Yeah, maybe that's true because there are some guests that have been kind of boring, you know, and we, I do my best to kind of edit things and I try my best to make it more exciting when during the interview, try to, you know, throw in some humor and things like that, try to get them more engaging and more fun, more entertaining, you know, because sometimes, you know, sometimes a guest comes on, they're just like a rock. I mean, they're just boring, you know, nothing going on at all. So you try to make it exciting and make it, I mean, even though it sounds great, but if your guest has like no energy and they're not excited to be there. If they have the energy level of like a say five and you're trying to get them out of like a eight or a seven, you know, and you're trying to pull it along. I mean, the listener, when they hear a guest at a five out of 10 level, uh, to them, it may sound like they're like a three, especially if you're like at a six or a seven. So that can be difficult too. And like I said, it's very hard to arrange the guest interviews with my busy schedule and with Christine's busy schedule. It's difficult to align all these things. In fact, almost every guest we have on, we have to cancel and reschedule for another time. Just because we book them on this day does not guarantee that we are going to actually have the interview on that day at that time. There's probably a 90% chance we're going to have to bump it and move it to another date sometime down the line. And sometimes that actually frustrates the guests. In fact, we had one that was like, well, they get kind of they get kind of snotty really in the messaging. And I was like, well, we don't need you. So see you later. And that's the thing. You, like I said before, you do not have to have a guest on your show. You can do a solo show. You can do, if it's just a co-hosted show, you can do that too. There's no reason to have a guest on your show unless for whatever reason, it helps complement the show you already have. That's the reason to have a guest on. Not just because you want to talk to so-and-so. I mean, you want to talk to so-and-so, give them a call. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I know sometimes it's easier to get X big name on your show if you say I have a podcast and, you know, come on my show, whatever. It gives you a chance to talk to them. I get that. I've done that. So as I toy with the idea of possibly not having guest interviews or maybe even thinking about doing guests like every, every so often, maybe once a month. Or once every two months, have like a one guest or something like that. Not all the time, not every single week. And when you do that, we got to come up with different content. And I know when we have a guest interview, Christine even said to me, she says, you know what? It's very easy to do the podcast when it's a guest interview, other than the fact we got to arrange the interview itself. But when we do have them on and they do come in and we do talk to them, we just throw a few questions out there, a little bit of chit chat. It's very easy because they are the content. Their guest becomes the content of the episode, which makes it very simple. So when we do create the regular episode, all we got to do is talk about what's going on in our lives, like the first you know, part of the episode and the tail end of the episode, package it up, wrap it up, and call it a day and send it out. It makes it very easy to knock out episodes. Trust me, I know. And doing solo episodes like this, it's tricky. I know. It's not the easiest thing to do. You know, uh, just this morning, I was uh, coming back to the house after I took the kids to school, and I noticed that one of them, my oldest son, Jacob, who uh, he's in seventh grade, he plays basketball for the school. Uh, I think P, but I think they actually he's on a team. He was playing basketball for a little bit. So yesterday, being Sunday, he had left the basketball out at our house because we have a basketball hoop in the front yard of the house. And so as I pulled up to the driveway, I see the basketball is laying on the grass. And okay, pick it up. And then what do I do? Yeah, I start throwing the ball into the basket. I start, you know, maybe for a good hour. I was out there this morning shooting hoops, you know, getting out there and taking shots at the basket. And it got me thinking, you know what? You miss every single shot that you never take. And if you're going to do a podcast or you're thinking about starting a podcast, You know, you're only going to fail if you never, ever start. It all takes that one episode to get started. Just crack the mic. You have something to say. Get out there and say it. You'll never know if you never try. If you never take the shot, you'll never know if you'll make it. And that's what I was doing all morning was taking basketball shots, having fun all around the driveway. I'll call it the home court. It's the home court here at Chris's house. In fact, that basketball hoop, I was originally going to leave that at the old house because I bought it for the old house I had. And uh, come moving day, 
I was like, yeah, I'll just leave it there. But then the mover said they can fit it in the moving truck. And I'm like, are you sure? Oh, yeah, we can make a room. We'll make it fit. Okay, if you want to bring it over here, go right ahead. Because I was planning on leaving it there. But uh, I'm glad I did because uh, it fits perfectly here in the driveway. And the kids love playing with it. I play with it now and then. And I mean, I, love, I used to play basketball when I was a kid too. So it was like my favorite thing to do was play basketball with my friends. So switching gears here, talking about podcast audio quality. Yeah, I know. I'll check that out. How do you figure that out? Well, I know there's lots of different tools. There's lots of different uh, DAWs or digital audio workstations, as I like to call them, that you record your podcast on. In fact, you don't have to record your podcast on that. You can record your podcast on other programs too if you want and just drop it in there to edit it. And there's lots of plugins and there's lots of programs. There's lots of all kinds of tools and goodies to help you make your podcast sound amazing. But you know, when I think about that kind of stuff, I think of all the different plugins out there in the world. There's, I don't know, thousands of them and different tools you can use to enhance your audio. I always kind of think that, you know what? Wouldn't it be better if your audio was good from the start? Like you didn't have to really like mess around with all the different plugins. You didn't have to mess around with all the different tools to make your audio sound great. What if it was good from the start? Just imagine that. Wouldn't it be so much easier to knock out a podcast if you already had good audio from the beginning? I know it's not the easiest thing to do, trying to figure out a great good audio. Well, one thing that you probably should do, depending on your microphone, is probably get fairly close to your microphone and have it record at a decent level. And then when you're finished with your editing on your podcast, you want to quote unquote master the audio, make it sound spectacular, like the finished MP3 of your podcast audio, I would suggest bring it up to a certain loudness level or luffs as they like to call it. It's basically the volume that your podcast audio is going to be sitting at when it's all done. In fact, you know, I was hearing some podcasts where they start off with some great intro music. It sounds amazing. Or perhaps maybe they have a, a promo of some kind or maybe even somebody else's promo in the beginning of the podcast, something on there that got you going in the mood. And then all of a sudden the music fades out. There's a pause. And then the host of the show comes on the mic and it sounds like a whisper. And you're like, what? What happened? Why we're at this volume here? And all of a sudden you come on. Now you're like a volume five. You're volume 10. Now you're volume five. What's up with that? What's that about? And then you realize, well, these people have no idea how to adjust the volume on their podcast. Or perhaps they have no idea how to make a podcast loud enough to where it sounds great no matter where your listener is listening to your show. You Got to remember, your listener could be listening to it on a noisy truck with earbuds or in a car or mowing the lawn, doing whatever they possibly could do. I like to make sure the show sounds amazing almost at any volume level. In fact, I probably play my shows a little louder than normal, but that's the way I'd like it because if you listen to the radio, in fact, that's how I actually figure this out, is I listen to the radio, regular FM radio, and they'd have like the talk show, whether it's the morning show or whatever show it is, I would play the volume, I would adjust my volume on my truck radio, and I'd like, this sounds like about right to where I feel comfortable, I like to hear the show. So this volume is what I'm comfortable with, this volume is what makes it sound great. Then I look at my truck radio and I say, oh, that's volume 15. I have the uh, Apple CarPlay in my F-150. So at volume 15, that's about half, I think. It uh, looks great. It sounds great, right? So I kind of got that figured out. So when I create my own podcast, whether it's a Chris and Christine show, Podtastic Audio, or podcast for my clients, I like to try to aim for that volume number. So when I go back in my truck and play the same podcast or play any podcast through my same truck, through the same wire, same everything, when I plays, I want to make sure it sounds about the same level. It sounds great. I like to keep it around uh, the middle mark. So around 15, It's uh, that's the way it is on my truck. Your vehicle will be different. So if you look at your vehicle and you play the radio and you crank the volume up loud enough to where you can hear it and understand it, but not too loud where it's distorted. You find the sweet spot for you, whatever number that is, try to make your podcast 
the same level when you're done producing your episode. So when you play your own show in your vehicle, it should be around the same volume level of whatever else is playing out there. Use the radio as a guide, as a benchmark for how loud your show should be. That's exactly what I've done over here. Now, I like using Levelator, the level, the audio. You can use that. You can use a phonic. That's another one people like to use. There's other programs like that too. Or the good old faithful, you always can crank the gain here in Audacity. You can boost the actual volume level that way. It's a very easy way to boost everything up. But be careful. Before you do that, you want to make sure the audio is very clean before you start cranking it up. Because if you start cranking things up, you could potentially crank up all the background noise and all the hiss that goes along with it. The floor noise. You want to remove that. There is a very easy way to do it in Audacity for free. It's noise reduction. The way it works is if there's any background noise or hiss or anything going on at all in the audio track, you highlight that noise, not you. You highlight the noise section, basically a blank section of audio. You highlight that. You click got it. Then you go to noise reduction again and you click get noise profile. So basically it's saying this noise we just highlighted right now. We want you to remember it, computer, so that when we go back again over the entire track and we highlight the entire track, we are going to remove that noise from the entire track. Now, it does a fairly good job. You can fine-tune the details of that exact frequency you're trying to eliminate and how you want to do it. You can do that, too. I always leave it on the stock setting, but you can fine-tune that stuff. And I've got other plugins and things I can use to really kind of fine-tune it even further. And I do that kind of stuff too with noise gates and whatever and all that fancy stuff. But basically at the end of the day, when your podcast has been produced and it's a finished final episode, you want it loud enough to where people understand you. And also too, if your intro music comes in at volume eight, then perhaps uh, when you come in, maybe you want a volume nine. But at the end of the day, you want to make sure you double check and listen to every single episode that you produce. After you're done with it all, give it a run through. You don't have to listen to the whole thing. Just listen to make sure that it sounds amazing and make sure that no matter where your listener is listening to your episode, they can hear it and understand it clearly. No matter where they are, no matter what they're doing, they can hear your show. That's basically all you got to do. Make sure they can hear it because obviously if they can't hear it, then what's the point of even making it, right? So before I wrap this up today, I want to say thank you once again for being here at Podtastic Audio. You can find out every single thing you want to know at Podtastic Audio at podtasticaudio.com. And I want to leave you with a little clip montage I put together for social media. And if you or if you know somebody or maybe you know somebody who owns a business that would like to start a podcast or even create a podcast to promote their business or their services, please let them know that I have a program already in place for that. Steer them to podtasticaudio.com slash easy. If you're thinking about starting a podcast, you don't even know how or where, don't even worry about it. I will take care of all the recording for you and editing, whether you live on the East Coast. And they put stuff in there all the time and they always are looking for content. Or the West Coast. As long as you're committed to making your life and yourself better. Even Atlanta. Having that is invaluable. How about Seattle? Biked across the floating bridge in Seattle. Or how about even in Australia, down under? The desires that you want for your life. So the e-course is doing really, really well. Maybe even in Spain. You will get it right the next time. Or how about Ireland? Take a lesson from listening. Or how about over here in Texas? I was trying to look for something that I could do from home. Or in Canada. I think the only difference is is how you feel about it. Or in the United Kingdom. Then you've got to carry on working, and that's the last thing you want to do. I will record your show like all of them here at podtasticaudio.com slash easy.